Hey guys, this is Dan from LearningCameras.com and here I've got the Tamron 24-70 f2.8 VC so it's stabilized against the brand new Canon 24-70 f4 IS. Now I will say this is a test I've been looking forward to for a long time. Uh, when the Tamron first came out with this 2.8 uh, stabilized lens. I've really wanted a 2.8 stabilized lens ever since I upgraded to full frame from the crop sensors where we had one and there was nothing available in full frames. You either went for the 24 to 105 and got a stabilized lens that way or you had a 2.8 that was not stabilized. So Canon still has not given us an f2.8 stabilized lens but this is the direction they're going. It's an f4 IS so this is all we've got brand new from Canon out. Let's see how it competes with what Tam Tamron has done which is basically given us the dream specs of a lens f2.8 with stabilization and we'll see how those two perform. Now when it comes to build quality of these two lenses uh, the Canon is a lot smaller than the Tamron you're looking at, a, it's a lot lighter, it's eight ounces lighter, so you're looking at a, a, quite a bit on that. It's very noticeable. So if you're looking for a smaller, thinner, lighter lens, even though this is not thin and light, it's about 22 ounces and it's about 29. So even though it's not thin and light at all, it is, it is gonna save you a little bit on that kind of space and that kind of weight. So, but you know, weight in some of these categories actually makes it feel a little bit better. The Tamron really feels like it's built like a tank. Everything is, is very firm on that. And overall, it feels very grippy on the grips on that. And the body feels like it's a nice metal or something like that along that. So uh, now when it comes to the lens hood on that, the Tamron fits on very, very nicely. Everything is very snug. When it connects into place, it's all very firm. On the Canon, I've got to say, it wiggles around like crazy, the lens hood on this. I can't understand what's going on. It makes it feel so cheap, and uh, you have a push button in order to unlock the lens hood to take it off and then put it back on. And it's one more step to having to lock that in place with that connection. And you have to find it while you're, you got the camera on a tripod or something like that or in your hand. You got to find that in order to pull it off. Uh, most of the time for shooting macro, you're going to want to pull out that lens hood too, just to get a little bit closer to whatever you're shooting. So overall, I don't know why they did that. And I can't get over the fact that this is, it's just plain loose. It makes it feel horrible. And um, so I'm really not sure what's going on with that. Now, as far as the lens caps go, they are both going to have this pinch design. I'm so glad that Canon finally went to this pinch cap design. It's finally actually you're able to pull off the lens cap without taking off the lens hood and uh, it works really well on both of these lenses equal on both of those now uh, a couple of problems with the design of the canon one is that the focus is so close to the base of the lens on this it's actually very inconvenient to use it or not the focus the zoom ring which is the base one right here is actually a lot more difficult to use while on a camera because it's so close to the body of the camera mostly when you have a grip on. If I had a grip on my 5D Mark III, you can see that it is so close to that, it's really tough to get your hand in there and manipulate that. Also, the uh, focus ring is very small, and so finding it is a little bit more difficult as well. There's not a lot of width to that. Compare that to the Tamron, which puts it at the other end of the lens, and so it's right up there, very easy to get to. And man, it is about two to three times the thickness of that. So you've got plenty of grip area in order to activate that zoom. Now, when it comes to the focus ring, we're seeing that the Canon is, is very uh, loose in its design. If, if you want to do quick throws, so if you're doing video or something like that, you might appreciate the fact that it's very loose, very smooth. The Tamron is not quite as smooth. Uh, it's a little more grippy if you're a photographer and you don't use it It might be nicer that way because you're not going to accidentally uh, Change your focus or anything like that if you're using the Canon You got to be careful because if you touch this it will turn it's it's I mean it's not loose loose But it, it's fairly loose on there and man every time I touch this lens this lens hood shakes and it just makes me feel like it is not a great lens so uh, when it comes to the buttons, all of them are very, very good. These slide very firmly in place. The AF, the stabilizer, all of that works great. On the Canon, you also have this macro ability. Now, I will say this is very tough. If you try to you know, figure out what's going on here, if you try to move it, it doesn't do anything. You actually have to zoom towards the macro, lift up on the lens, and turn at the same time. It usually requires two hands, and it's not the most convenient way of doing it. 
but it works. And I must say that when this is in macro mode, it does very well. So that's a basic on the, uh, on the build quality of the lenses. You will see that the Tamron is definitely larger than the Canon all over the place, even when it's zoomed out. Um, now, one other thing is that the Tamron does turn the opposite way than the um, Canon does on zooming. If you're a Nikon shooter, I think Nikon actually does the same way as the Tamron, so they've gone with that way. So it's a little bit more confusing if you're coming from a Canon body to figure out that the zoom works the other way. And also, the zoom is usually, Canon does it kind of closer to the base of the lens, like on this one. So it was a little weird going between them where my zoom is further along the lens on this one and very close to the body of the camera on this one. I preferred this uh, a lot at where the placement is. It just took some getting used to. So. Now let's see what these do in testing. So here we have a sharpness test that we're gonna do now. And let me just say a couple things about the sharpness test. Let's look at the photo of what I took in the sharpness test. Here is the uh, Tamron at 50 millimeters shooting this box to get this focus test and the Canon shooting at 50 millimeters uh, to get this. And what we can see is in the top left corner of this, you can see the area outside of the box and you can see the bokeh. The Canon has some oval rings in it that appeared everywhere that I took a shot of this lens and it really is ugly and I'm not sure what's going on with the Canon but anywhere other than the center of the frame did not produce round bokeh at all. It was all this kind of oval shape on that. So keep that in mind as we're taking a look at this test. That was just something I noticed when I took these pictures. Now when we take a look at 24 millimeters and we put these side by side the Canon is a little sharper than the Tamron on this test. Zoomed in at 100%, uh, we can see the difference on here. It's, it's not extreme, it's pretty slight, but it is notably sharper. Now when we pull that up to 50 millimeters, the Tamron now is taking an edge, and it, it's pretty significant edge. You can definitely see that the Tamron is winning this fight. This is at f4, uh, both of these lenses are at f4, and I definitely prefer the way the Tamron looks on that one. Now. Uh, as far as chromatic abrasion, we do have a little bit more on the Tamron than the Canon, but both of these are very well controlled. The Canon is almost absent of it completely. The Tamron has just a tiny bit. It's still way better than what the 24 to 105 produced at the same level. So if you're used to that, uh, you'll be you'll be loving the Canon or the Tamron on this one, and especially the Canon because it even has less on it. Now at 70 millimeters, we can also see that the Tamron is taking just a slight edge on the Canon. It's not as noticeable at 70 millimeters. Uh, it's definitely noticeable at 50, so those are pretty much the differences in sharpness. Uh, the Canon wins the 24 millimeter and the Tamron pretty much wins everywhere else on, on the zoom range on that one. Now, just for fun, we put these at f2.8. The Tamron's at f2.8, the Canon's at f4. And just to see how this held up, and really the differences are not that bad. At 24 millimeters, the Canon is going to be sharper, of course. It has a one-stop advantage. is closed down one stop on this, but you're letting twice as much light into the Tamron. So that could be an advantage if you're shooting in high ISOs. The picture might look way worse at 3200 ISO than 1600 ISO, for example. So uh, as we move up to 50 millimeters, you know, I, the difference just isn't really that bad. The Tamron is still holding up really well at f2.8, and the same thing goes at 70 millimeters. The Canon is definitely a little bit sharper than the Tamron when it's the Tamron's at f2.8, but it really isn't that bad. I don't mind shooting the Tamron at f2.8, and once we pull that up to f4, the Tamron really took the lead. So now for a focus test. Uh, what I did on this focus test, and it's not completely accurate, but I took a timer, uh, set it up. At half a second, we took uh, both the Tamron lens and the Canon lens. We set them up on a 5D Mark III, focused to infinity, set up the timer about two feet away, and just to see how fast they focus from infinity to about that two feet. And I did this a bunch of times because there's some error involved in this. But overall, my results are very consistent with this test. So we took uh, the Tamron, and the Tamron was averaging uh, about uh, 0.65 uh, of a second, so 5.65 was the number on the clock, and that's pretty good. It's not great. It's not quite as good as we see in most of the Canons on there that tend to get under half a second. Now, on the Canon, we averaged about 0.45 seconds, so we are seeing an improvement on the Canon. 
uh, the Canon does focus faster. What I did notice with the Tamron is it seemed to focus just about there and then you got the split second of hesitation before it took the picture. So I'm not sure exactly what it's doing during that time, if it's just not sure if it's focused properly. But all of the Tamron tests uh, did turn out perfectly. It did uh, do fine as far as snapping the picture. It was completely consistent. It was just a tiny bit slower than the Canon, enough for you to notice. Um, I did take it out for a, a little bit of a test. I had uh, my daughter run it me as fast as she could and basically just to see that both of these were able to track consistently and no problems at all with either one. You have to remember we're focusing from infinity to two feet in 0.65 seconds. So obviously tracking an object is going to be no problem because it's probably not going to be an object that is moving at you that quickly. So the Tamron is still great at focusing, but the Canon does win this test. It's a little bit faster on the motor. Now when it comes to vignetting on these, on these lenses, we take a look at the Canon and at f4 the Canon doesn't look that great for an f4 lens. Um, you can definitely see it into the corners, a lot of lenses you begin to, the, the vignetting begins to disappear at around f4. Now when we take a look at the Tamron for example at f4, uh, most of that vignetting is gone. It, it really is not bad at all, you're getting almost nothing on there. In fact, if we take a look at the Tamron at f2.8, the Tamron at f2.8 is very, very similar to what we're getting at the Canon at f4. So Tamron definitely wins the vignetting test on this one. Uh, it's much more noticeable on the Canon. I mean, we can take this out in software so it's not too big of a deal, but it's nice to have a lens that doesn't have at least a huge amount in the lens. And in the Tamron at f4, nothing. At f2.8, you do have a little bit, but once again, it can be pulled out in software. Now one big bonus to the Canon is that macro mode. And like I was telling you earlier, it's very, very difficult to activate. It definitely needs two hands. It's even a little bit more difficult to get it out of macro mode because it does lock it in macro mode once it's in there. So I, you know, I can't say much about the design, but once you're in there, 0.7 to 1 uh, is almost as good as an actual macro lens and most people will be fine with that. It does give you image stabilization as well, which you don't get in something like the 60 millimeter f2.8 or the 100 millimeter f2.8 uh, non-L lenses. If you go to the L lens, you do get stabilization, but you're looking at a thousand bucks for a lens like that. And uh, this one will give you that in it. And most people aren't shooting macro at f2.8. You're normally at a much higher aperture. So the fact that you're at f4 on this lens is not a big deal. I mean, the sharpness isn't quite as good as one of those prime lenses, but it's still very, very good. And uh, it does have one ability that the Tamron just doesn't have. Now real quickly, let's take a look at the bokeh on these lenses. Now as we take a look at the Tamron, you can see that the rings are very round. Both of these have a nine, uh, have nine aperture blades on them. Everything looks good, but as we kind of get into the details, even zoom in to 100%, the Tamron has some stuff going on on the inside, some onion bokeh, a little bit of lines. Uh, it just doesn't look too, too pretty on that. So not the prettiest I've seen. This is obviously an extreme test because we're, we're have an object at infinity and I'm close focusing as, as far as the lens will go. So this is probably the worst case scenario and we got them exposed for the bokeh, which generally doesn't happen. Uh, so this is definitely a worst case scenario. You don't see this bad on the normal results, but it does have some stuff going on in the Canon or in the Tamron. Now when we take a look at the Canon, this is very interesting. Uh, the center of the frame looks good, everything is round. When we take a look at the outside of the frame though, it, it's, it's completely oval. None of the circles around there are actually circles, it's all oval. So if you put your subject at the center of the frame, your bokeh is not going to look very good. And this is very apparent even uh, looking at the regular photo without zooming in to 100%. Now when we do zoom in to 100%, the actual round ones look great. Uh, nothing really going on inside. I mean, a tiny bit of that little bit of onion, but it's almost unnoticeable in any kind of normal test. But uh, as we look at those pictures, the Canon just doesn't look that great because of that oval. So, you know, it's really a toss up. I, I can't figure out which one I prefer the most and each one of them have that big negative to them and I, I can't understand what's going on with the Canon on that and why they let that pass. I did not see that on the uh, Canon 24 to 105 that much so uh, I'm not sure why it's exhibiting that on this lens and uh, you know you can be the, the deciding factor on which one you prefer but once again in normal shots the Tamron didn't look that bad at all 
So on a normal shot not cropped into 100%, uh, the Tamron was a clear winner here. So one thing that I did is I got a little rig. Uh, I was able to hook both cameras or two cameras up to this rig. I've got the uh, Tamron on the right and the Canon on the left. And you can see from both of these lenses how they're doing in video with the image stabilization turned on. And uh, I have pretty shaky hands, so this is kind of a worst case scenario. And this is what they are able to perform. As far as sound goes, the Canon was pretty much silent. I could really not hear anything. I mean, I'm out in a little bit of a noisy environment outside, but I couldn't hear anything from that. The Tamron was almost as quiet. Uh, occasionally I heard just a little bit, but it was almost indistinguishable. You would have to be in a very quiet place to be able to hear those kind of sounds. So, in conclusion, I, I've got to say that I really struggled to find the areas where the Canon just outshined the Tamron. Uh, the only thing really is the uh, macro mode, and it was a little bit faster in focusing, but it's not that the Tamron was bad, it's just the Canon was a little bit faster. I really don't think that in the real world you're going to have a problem with the speed of the Tamron. Uh, you do get an extra stop of light. I can't, I mean, that's a huge difference. Being able to shoot at f2.8 is going to give you much, uh, much smaller depth of field if that's what you're going for, if you're looking for something like portraits, or it's going to give you a, um, a twice as much light inside the camera, and that can mean shooting at 1600 instead of 3200 ISO. And I've got to say that that is one of the biggest advantages to something like a Tamron. Add that to the fact that this is $200 cheaper right now than the Canon, and that's just a bonus on that. Now the Canon is lighter, so you do have to carry around the extra weight. You got eight more ounces, probably another uh, inch on the tip, uh, maybe just under uh, about an inch in length that the Tamron is a little bit longer than the Canon. But uh, I mean, overall, if you're carrying a big setup, this is not much heavier than what you're used to already. So uh, I would, in fact, it's probably not much uh, heavier than the Canon 24 to 105, which was heavier than the new one. The new one is a lot smaller than the old one. So this is gonna be about the same size as the old Canon 24 to 105. So, I, I mean, overall, I, I just struggled to find the areas that the Canon just really outshine the Tamron. For 200 bucks, I, I'd have to say that I would uh, prefer the extra stop of light. Um, if you're gonna use macro, maybe a macro lens or a, like an extension tube on, on something like this would be all you would need. And uh, I, I'm really just struggling to find the areas that Canon has improved to a point to make me justify this $1,500 lens.